Another precious moments, brothers and sisters, again to be with you and uh, learn of the Word of God in what uh, He will want us to be instructed in, in such a times as this. We are living in uh, very interesting times and uh, I just, uh, I'm, I'm really I'm blessed to believe that God they were not uh, enabled to live in such a times as this and so I really appreciate the Lord because we are the generation that has to see Christ coming in the clouds of the air we are a people that has to declare the final messages to the world and uh, just listen to what Christ is speaking to us at such a time as this and uh, be able to give our hearts to him fully so that uh, he may work for us in us and through us to finish the work and so I welcome you to the viewing of uh, in the series the latter rain and it is the presentation the important thing the important thing shall we pray as we even start this session shall we humble ourselves Thank you for giving Jesus Christ to be a propitiation for our iniquity and sins. I do pray that this hour you may speak to us. We may understand what is speaking to us. And heavenly, you have not left us darkness to what we are supposed to be what we are supposed to do and who do it, such a things in us and so take eminence in everything in Christ Jesus name we pray amen yesterday we were looking at uh, something so special we were looking at we were looking at the works of atonement in uh, yesterday's presentation and uh, I'll just build on it and see what the Lord will want us to learn right now. One of the important things that uh, we we'll do or participate in in such a times like this. Looking forward, when our churches will fulfill the duty resting upon them, they will be living, working agencies for the Master, the manifestation of Christian love 
will fill the soul with a deeper, more honest fervor to work for him who gave his life to save the world. We shall see the medical missionary work broadening and deepening at every point of its progress because of the inflowing of hundreds and thousands of streams until the whole earth is covered as the waters cover the sea. So we are looking forward in a time where the church would be in such a condition. In fact, I just want to start on a high note. I just want to start on a high note. And, uh, sorry. and uh, I hope it will make sense to you also. It is found in the book. Uh, it's book. Um, let me see it. It is found in the book of Ministry of Healing, page 104, paragraph 2. And it says, The work which the disciples did, we also had to do. Every Christian is to be a missionary. In sympathy and compassion, we are to minister to those in need of help seeking with unselfish earnestness to lighten the woes of suffering humanity. So this is the work that uh, we are called to do. Every Christian must be a Another Something that she says that is going to happen in our time. See if I can and share. It is found in uh, a call to medical evangelism, page 11, paragraph 4. Here it is. As Religious subvert the liberties of our nation. Those who will stand freedom of to be placed in an favorable position for our own sake, brothers and sisters, for our own sake, we should, while we have the opportunity, become intelligent in regard to disease, it is causes prevention and cure. All those who do this of labor, there will Suffering ones, them, help not only among of our own, faith, but largely among those who know not the truth. The shortness of time demands an energy that has not been aroused among those who claim to believe the present truth. A call to medical evangelism, 11, paragraph 4, found in Council. So we are looking at this presentation, the important thing. Yesterday we were looking at the works of atonement, the work of Isaiah chapter 61, the work of Christ, and also Luke 4, 18, and then the work of the church in Isaiah 58. And we are building on that, the important thing that um, we have to do. The word of the church actually shall arouse and uh, still, uh, I want just to take you back to the quote and uh, of the presentation. When our churches will feel the duty resting upon the agency, the man and love will feel to work for human for for him who gave his life to save the world. We shall see the medical missionary work broadening and deepening at every point of its progress <coughs> sorry in flowing and earth is covered, earth is covered. so what do you think looking forward to the manifestation of christian love will fill the soul with a deeper 
and more earnest fervor. This is what we are looking for. And the time is not far in a distant. We should be seeing this being manifested in churches. Every pastor. Upon the work. And expanding and expanding for Christ and not continuing in selfishness. This is the period that we uh, forward to and doesn't have to be in the times that we are in, the time the liberty of nations are uh, being taken away. And so this manifestation until the whole earth is covered as the waters cover the sea. This manifestation, uh, I'll, I'll go because I'm hiring some of the important things. The quote is, when our churches will feel, fulfill the duty resting upon them, then we'll be living working agencies for the master. The manifestation of Christian love will fill the whole soul with a deeper, more honest fervor to his life. The important thing, think, actually, the manifestation, Christian love, the manifestation of Christian love. That is what we have to see. And when there is a manifestation of Christian love, feeling more honest, but then what shall we see? The whole will be covered waters cover the sea now where do we find this where do we find this in the book of uh, Isaiah uh, let us just look at the book I'm talking about one thing the series is the latter rain Isaiah, the book of uh, Isaiah 61. Sorry, the book of Let us see what it's We are told Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Now, the quote says that uh, the whole earth is covered as the waters cover the sea. With what? With the light, the glory from the Lord rising upon us. In which work? In the work of, look here, what is the work then that uh, we are being told about? The manifestation of Christian love filling the soul with deeper, more earnest favor. If only we can experience this in our lives, and put it in practice, then the proclaiming the God finished. And I have a lot of things to speak about this. In Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 14, we are actually told, and uh, Habakkuk, Isaiah 11 9 and Habakkuk 2 14. Let, let, let me share with you. They shall not hurt nor destroy in my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Now, let me put something also on the screen. The book of Hebrews chapter 8. Hebrews chapter 8 and I think it's from verse 10. Hebrews It is verses 8, 10, and 11. 
What does the word of the Lord say then? This is what we read in the word of God. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, said the Lord, I'll put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts, and I'll be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor, and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. Why? Because the angel of Revelation chapter 18 will be doing its work, going around the world manifest manifesting the love of Christ to the whole world. The angel of Revelation chapter 18 will be manifesting the glory of the Lord to the whole earth, a people filled with the earnestness of the world before them. They will be able to work for the Lord. These are the most important things that I'm looking at in this latter rain series. But um, should all the inhabitants of this little world refuse obedience to God, he will not be left without glory. He could sweep every mortal from the earth in a moment and put to people in. God is not one. You can find that in Review and Herald, uh, March 1, 1881. So, look here. Science of the Time, August 27, 1902. It says, Before Christ's first advent, all heaven waited the bidding of their commander to pour out the vials of wrath upon a rebellious world. One word from him, one sign, and the world would have been destroyed. The world's unfallen would have said, Amen. Thou art righteous, O God, because thou hast exterminated rebellion. Signs of the time, August 27, 1902. But our merciful God, he has worlds upon worlds that give him divine honor, and heaven the universe will have been happy if he to perish. In March 9, come to a point. Three times Christ prays, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. What if his request had been granted and the cup had passed from him? The sin that was presented as a result of such a sin made me for a time consciousness. Uh, the sins was to me again and again. it had passed before me three times. As I have thought of that cup trembling in the hands of Christ, as I have realized that he might have refused to drink it and left the world to perish in its sin, that every night should be Christ that I may. That is the presentation, General Conference Bulletin, June 6, 1909. So we are to work the works of Christ, Isaiah says, the righteousness shall go before thee. The, the Lord the work that come. Man is the whom God works for man, and yet how few have given themselves and reservedly to work the works of God. Man can accomplish nothing without Jesus, and yet it is so arranged in the plan of salvation that its object and uh, he's seeking for those who will cooperate with him in this last day works he is waiting upon you and me why because the Lord loves us so much that uh, the reason why Christ come back is so, so that we should not be lost and so we have much from God. What does He expect from us? The Lord has shown us what is good, and He doesn't expect something grievous from us. Mm? The Lord, to his word nothing grievous does he expect from us but just allegiance to him this 
nothing that we may not give him a energies and effort should be consecrated. The the work of saving souls is not left unto angels. But even as Christ emptied himself, so that also we may empty ourselves of our own energies. We should emptied himself to letting come between us and God. Home mission on November 1, 1897. I want you to see what it says. The end, then angels of God will cooperate with human instrumentalities and religious system will be integrated to relieve the necessities of suffering human beings who are in physical, mental and moral need. Look here. We are told that there is a system that God will work to relieve the necessities and this is what we want to see. This work is the work of the churches have left this work is the work the churches have left undone and they cannot prosper until they have taken hold of this work in the cities, in highways and in hedges. Then angels with us human instrumentalities to meet the necessities of the people. Then angels of God will cooperate with human instrumentalities and a religious system. What is this religious system that we are talking about? The medical missionary work. The right arm of the third angel that has been Jesus Christ in most of his work he did more of healing than yet we think that uh, the greatest work that a man can do is to preach. No. That is not the greatest work that has been entrusted to man. There is a work more meaningful than just of standing and uh, work of demonstrating the gospel. Important thing, demonstration of the gospel is the most important thing. Now I want to introduce you to something. What will begin the loud cry? I want you to see what began the loud cry in 1888 and uh, what will bring the loud cry in our uh, Here it is. November 22, 1892. The time of test is just upon us, for the loud cry of the third angel has already begun in the revelation of the righteousness of Christ. Not in the preaching of the righteousness of Christ. It's not the beginning It's not the beginning of John chapter 18. No. It was a revelation, something that is demonstrative. So, the loud cry of the third angel has already begun in the revelation, manifestation of the righteousness of Christ. The light of the angel whose glory shall fall out. When the work is carried, and people demonstrate what Christ has done in, the, in their life, then this will be. A beginning of the glory that shall fill the whole earth. The beginning of the light of the angel in Revelation chapter 18. But unless we take up this work, then we shall, we shall preach nothing. Faith in Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, the one who pardons our sins and transgressions, the one who is able to keep us from sin and lead us in his footsteps is set forth in the 58th chapter of Isaiah. He presented the fruit that works by love. That fruit that works by sacrifice the soul of The work of Isaiah chapter 58 is a work of uprooting selfishness. Faith and works are here combined. 
Thy righteousness shall go before thee. What does this mean? Christ our righteousness. Review and Herald, March 17, 1910. When we let work in us, but work in us, see the creation chapter. We see Christ mentioned there, and we shall see Isaiah 58, which is the third angel's message in verity in action. Without that, then claim or proclaim or participate in something that has to be done in this world. Christ method alone in uh, Ministry of Healing, page 143. He mingled with the people as one who desired of their then uh, their needs, then he thing that will uh, Christianity. This, I mean, this is, uh, it will be an impetus to the messages we have for the world. In Isaiah chapter 58, and 5, you are told, why they say, and why have we take no note that we do. these are not the important things. Fasting, afflicting our souls. These are not the things that God takes notice of. In fact, in the day of your fast, you you find pleasure and exploit all your laborers. Indeed, you fast for strife and debate. And the face of wickedness. Do not fast as you do, he says. Fast that I have the most thing. Make your voice hard on high. This is not what the Lord has ordained. This is the fast that he has ordained. Is it a fast that I have chosen? A day for whom a man to afflict his whole soul? Is it to bow down his head like a bulrush or a bulrush and to spread out sackcloth and ash? You call this a fast acceptable to the These people saying that they have fasted and uh, they have afflicted their soul. The reason is this, because on the day of uh, atonement, the people were told to afflict their soul, the people were told to fast, and the people were told not to do any survival work. And anyone who will do these things was to be cut off from Israel. And so in Isaiah chapter 58, we have a people who are saying that we are on the day in the day of atonement. And have you have you not seen that we have fasted? Have you not seen that we have afflicted our souls? Have you seen that we have not done survival work? But the Lord asked them, Is this the first that I have anointed? Just a day to bow down like a bull rush. A day to kick fists at each other. And he goes ahead and talks about the feast he has anointed. The first that he has anointed. Because the day of atonement was one day. In ancient Israel but we are in the modern Israel where actually the atonement the day of atonement has run from 1844 until the time you are living in if you said that you have to fast if you said you have to afflict your soul and do no survival work for a hundred and seventy seven years would you have made it no and that is why in Isaiah chapter 58 he's saying that this is not the anti-type fast that I have ordained on this day of atonement, but something more important, something more uh, uh, different from what was done in ancient Israel. And what does the Lord continue telling us? He goes ahead and demonstrate the most important thing. What is the first that I have anointed in this antitypical day of atonement? To lose the bonds of wickedness, undo the heavy burdens, let the oppressed go free, Break every yoke, share your bread with the hungry, shelter the poor who are cast out, clothe the naked, extend your soul to the hungry, satisfy the afflicted souls. This is the fast that I have anointed or appointed in this antitypical day of atonement. And so, that's a question. Look, look at 
the Lord says that there is a work that I have, uh, I have appointed you to. I, I want you to see again. This is what he says. What is the work that I have appointed you to do? Loose the bones of the wickedness and do the heavy burdens. Let the oppressed go free. Break every yoke. Share your bread with the hungry. Shelter the poor who are cast out. Clothe the naked. Extend your soul to the hungry. Satisfy the afflicted soul. But uh, what is the problem with this? People living in an uh, antitypical day of atonement and to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, This thing said and to it the beginning of the creation. I know you are called I wish. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I'll vomit you out of my mouth because you say, I am rich, have become wealthy and have need of nothing and do not know that you are wretched miserable poor, blind and naked they supposed to just look at it in the day of atonement they were supposed to lose bonds of wickedness and do heavy burdens let the oppressed go free break every yoke share bread with the hungry shelter the poor who are cast out clothe the naked extend their souls to the satisfy the soul what is the problem what is the problem the lord says i know your works but what kind of works are these are they the works that have been mentioned in isaiah chapter 58 let us decipher this. let us try and they are rich goods in need in their increase of things have they gone to sustain those who do not have them they say i'm rich have become wealthy and have need of nothing this is their say he says i know your works and what are they? their works that i am rich have become wealthy and have need of nothing. It is not the works of Isaiah 58. So the Lord tells them, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, that you may be rich and wealthy. The of your neck and anoint your eyes with eyes that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I'll come in to him and dine with him and with me. To him who wants to sit with me alone as I open and sat down with my father on his because that he who overcomes, then he will grant them these things. It means that the people who are um, professing that they are rich, they are in need of nothing. They have not overcome. If their case was the case of overcoming, then Christ will not be telling them that if you overcome. Since as Christ that overcome. And so, when the church accepts the message of righteousness by faith, uh, in 1888, 1890s, the church became laudisha and the prophet says that there will be a shaking born and this shaking will be born by a straight test forth by the goodness audition only those will be important <clears throat> the work of being missionaries the work of ministering unto others you remember what james 127 says this is uh, the pure religion, true and pure religion, to visit the widows, the fatherless, and to be transported. This is the religion. The heavenly guest goes while obstructing his entry. Jesus always knocks through the prosperity he gives to us and loads us with many blessings to test our fidelity. If we will participate in the most important things, you remember the the Pharisees, they could. Let us 
verse the book of Matthew yes Matthew 20 the works and the most important things the antitypical day of atonement this is what it reads woe unto you scribes and pharisees hypocrites for ye pay tithe of men and anise and cumin the most smallest things and have omitted the weightier matters of the law judgment mercy and faith this ought ye to do this ought ye to have done and not to leave the other undone we have the weightier matters of law, judgment, mercy, and faith. The ministering to the souls that uh, are in need. Things chapter fifty-eight, and so will we squander all what the Lord has given unto us, and have all three of our being of self, increase, but reach out to others. And why do I say this? That uh, look at uh, uh, I'll repeat in this series. I'll be repeating this quote more often. That is um, one MR two twenty eight. This should ring in your uh, one MR two twenty eight point two because we are speaking of the most important things. The Laodiceans say that they are rich, they are increased in goods, they have nothing, need of nothing. Yet, the works of Isaiah chapter 58, they will not do it, which is the most important thing. The loud cry of the third angel's message is Isaiah chapter 58, the right arm of the everlasting gospel. They will not do that. They are like the Pharisees who will tithe amin and cumin, but the weightier matters, they cannot do it. And how do you know that the Seventh Day Adventists are not doing the work that they should be doing? You just look at the quote, 1 MR 228.2. God's purpose in giving the third angel's message to the world is to prepare people to stand true to him during the investigative judgment. So the third angel's message is to make us stand true to God during investigative judgment. And how do we stand true to it? This is the purpose for which we establish and maintain our publishing houses our schools, our sanitarium, hygienic restaurant, treatment rooms, and food factories. This is our purpose in carrying forward every line of work in the course. And so, unless we have these institutions that are essential for medical missionary work, the most important thing running, then we cannot claim that we are having the third angel's message, and we cannot claim that we are standing true to God during investigative judgment. Do you see how it is null and void? To say that we are proclaiming the third angel's message when the things that are to make us stand true to God during investigative judgment and during the third angel's message, they are not within our reach. And why are they not within our reach? Because the Lord has blessed us so much. The Lord has given us so much as a church, as individuals, but we hold what we have. We do not ask to give. We ask to consume it for ourselves. If all the Seventh-day Adventists would uh, give their means, wouldn't we actually have these facilities running and then we can be able to stand true to go during investigative judgment, then we may realize the purpose of the third angels being given to the world. So let us not, brothers and sisters, deceive ourselves me being included it is not just i'm not included let us not deceive ourselves let us not deceive our world we are like a fig tree that christ cast by the roadside on it it had a good profession it deceived the world when the people passing by the road saw the fig tree they thought that ah this is a tree with green leaves when i go on to eat because the figs with the green leaves must have fruits if I go to eat, I may be satisfied of my hunger. But uh, when the master teacher went 
to eat he found no fruit and seeing that this tree was actually cumbering the ground and deceiving those who passed by he cursed the tree he said that never again shall anything grow from thee and the next day when Peter was passing, he saw the tree withered and he asked Jesus Christ, why is it so? And Christ was explaining to him, this is what will happen to a people who don't produce fruit, but they have profession of leaves, deceiving other people. You see, the, the, the most deploring uh, situation of the Laodicean church, it has a profession of the fig leaves, of the fig tree having leaves yet without fruit. And the Lord cannot withstand this. We cannot say that we are having the third angel's message and standing true to God when the purpose of why we are given the third angel's message and how we are to stand to true the things uh, that have been uh, uh, given unto us to guide us, they are not there. And this condition of Laodicea is so bad. The condition of Laodicea is not a good one. to realize that have been called at such a time as this. We have to realize why the church has been called in this end time to stand to God. It is that our because we have been given a third angel's message which we have not put into practice. And uh, the Lord looks down to a people who have been entrusted to us. And he sees that they are between the porch and the altar. We are to present a message to the world. But this is, this is not like um, the other people are presenting it. Our, our messages have to be so different. And uh, let's not a good thing. Actually, we have leaves. Uh, and yet without fruit. Why this condition is so bad in the eyes of the Lord? Why he must spew us out of his mouth? If I uh, on the screen. This is uh, from uh, our higher calling 348 paragraph 4. Half-hearted Christians are worse than infidels. This is the Laodicean condition. For their, their deceptive words and non-committal position lead many astray. The infidel shows his colors. The lukewarm Christian, this is Laodicean condition, deceives both parties. You see that? He is neither a good worlding nor a good Christian. Satan uses him to do a work that no one else can do. That is why the Lord hates the Laodicean condition. So, it is better to be an infidel than to be in a lukewarm position, to be half-hearted Christian, to be a lukewarm Christian, to be in a Laodicean condition. Brothers and sisters, it's not a good thing. Deplorable. About the most important thing, which is the medical missionary work of Isaiah chapter 58, the right arm of the third angel's message. The message that will actually make us stand true to doing investigation. The first we should Are we in We do not have a demonstration. 
of the faith, but we have a profession of the faith, which God does not like. Says the true witness, T162.1, I will thou call or hold. Look warm and spew thee out of my mouth. is willing that you should be Christian in name, for you can suit his purpose better. If you have a form and not true goldness, he can use you to decoy others into the same self-deceived way. Some poor souls will look to you instead of looking to the Bible and will come up they are as good and are certain. In, in the previous quote, in the previous quote, we saw that half-hearted Christians are worse than infidel for their deceptive words and non-committal position. The Christian he is neither Christian. He asks him to do that no one else can do. That is the work of deception. Now, you say that uh, prophet, why speak such a harsh words to us? Ask the prophet, why speak such a harsh words to us as a Laodicean people? This is the same condition that the Pharisees were in. And Christ rebuked them. He tells them in the book of uh, Matthew, let me try to find it, that uh, you can pass. You can pass. Uh, oh, 23.15 of Matthew. Let us see it. 23.15 of Christian church. People are Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you can pass, see, and learn to make one proselyte. And when he is made, and when he is made, you make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. Now, I'd like you to put that verse, Matthew 23, 15, besides, besides uh, Revelation chapter 3, verse 16. Matthew 23, 15. Why do I say that? Look at, uh, I want you to look at our previous quote. That is 1T162.1. Look at it. What is the problem of the Jewish? They can pass, cease to make one a proselyte and make him sevenfold the work, the, 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 the child of Belial. And 1T, we are told, 162.1 says the truth witness, I will thou what call or hold, so that because thou art lukewarm and neither call nor hold. I'll spew thee out of my mouth. Satan is willing that you should be Christians in name, Laudicians, for you can suit his purpose better. If you have a form and not true goldness, he can use you to decoy others into the self-deceived way. Some poor soul will look to you. That is the one that you proselyte. Instead of looking to the Bible standard and will come up no higher, they are as good as you and are satisfied. That is even a more worse condition than what he was in, an infidel or a wildling. We are talking about the most important thing. This is the latter rain series. I know people may not like what they certain certain sound, so that people may come up to the standard or not. Look at 2T, 175.3. I'm just pointing out this. 75.3. The influence of youth in this church extends as far as they are known, and their unconsecrated lives are proverbial, and none have had more influence in the wrong direction than you. You have dishonored your profession and been miserable representing representatives of the truth. 
says the true witness, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I will thou art cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I'll spew thee out of my mouth. Why you call, there will be some hope that you will be converted. But where self-righteousness guards one about, instead of the righteousness of Christ, the deception is so difficult to be seen, and the self-righteousness so hard to be put away, that the case is the most difficult to reach. An unconverted, godless sinner stands in a more favorable condition than a laudition. This is the true matter of thing. What again were their works? Their works were to be the works of Isaiah chapter 58. Medical missionary work, relieving the poor, clothing the naked, uh, ministering unto those who are in prisons. But what did the Laodiceans say? We are rich and increased, we are increased in goods and in need of nothing. And Christ says that now I know thy works. It is not the works of Isaiah 58, but it is the work of self-exaltation. I am increased in riches and in need of nothing. And if you are in need of nothing, brothers and sisters, are you even in need of Christ himself? That is why he is outside the Laodicean church. He is not inside because they are in need of nothing. If you are in need of nothing, you are in need of zero thing, whether it be salvation or whether it be nothing. That is the condition that the Laodicean is in. How I pray that we may come out of this condition because it is the worst condition. We are told that, uh, uh, look what it says, an unconverted godless sinner stands in a more favorable condition than a laudition. Just think about that. A person, an infidel who is in the world, a worldling, anyone who doesn't even think about Christ stands in a more favorable condition than a laudition. Think about that for a moment, brothers and sisters. It is not something to joke around with. It is something that should make us shiver that we are called Christian while having a profession of knowledge or of religion, but missing the corresponding works. Now you say, will, do we, are, we, are we saved by works? No, I'm not saying we are saved by works. No way. Continued on. All his gifts are to be used in blessing humanity, in relieving the suffering and the need. We are to feed the hungry, to clothe the naked, to care for the widow and the fatherless, to minister to the distressed and downtrodden. God never made the world. He never made man should have another black side of life. Christ above the actual necessities of life are entrusted to man to do good to bless humanity. The Lord says, sell that you have and give arms, be ready to dispute, willing to communicate. When thou makest the poor, the lame, the blind, the blessed, go free, break. 58. Deal thy bread to the hungry, bring the poor that are cast out of thy house. When thou seest the naked, cover him, satisfy the afflicted, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. These are the Lord's commands. You think that mean and cumin is not important. But wait a month matters to do with judgment and faith. Matters to do with courtesy, matters to do with the pure religion of James 127, which is visiting the fatherless, we visiting the widows and keeping ourselves unspotted. Yet at uh, Seventh day Adventists will think that uh, their work is to appear before the Lord on the Sabbath starting from sunset Friday to sunset on, on, on Saturday. And they call it the keeping of the Sabbath. They appear in the presence of the Lord and all they do is to play music, is to argue debates in the church of some doctrines, and at the end of the day give their tithe and think that now they have kept the Sabbath. No, the keeping of the Sabbath is found in Isaiah chapter 58. After you have lost the band of those who are in need of food, those who are naked, those who are in prisons, then shall the light arise and then the Sabbath will be proclaimed more fully. The Sabbath is not proclaimed more fully while people are sitting in church from sunset Friday to sunset on Sabbath debating about a doctrine, jumping up and down in the church. 
And now they said we have been before the Lord for 24 hours a day in a week. And they said that is the keeping of the Sabbath. No. We are self-deceived and the true testament to the Laodicean should sound in every church. That people may awake. In fact, I would want you to study about how Christ kept the Sabbath. Christ went into the Sabbath day. As it was his custom, he stood up to read if he was given something to read. Then we are told that he went to a lunch. And then after lunch, Christ dedicated the whole of his afternoon in the ministry of healing. In the ministry of relieving the necessities of the people. Where did we get this idea that the Sabbath is a day of sitting in the church from uh, morning to evening? Attending to this and attending to that. And not thinking about Isaiah chapter 58 and doing the works of atonement. The most important thing. Satan has robbed us of even the knowledge of reading the Bible and understanding its brothers and sisters. And yet as Laodicean we claim we have everything and in need of nothing. This is a self-deception and Christ now stands outside the door. You would wonder how a person in a Laodicean state says that the Lord is with us. No, 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 no. In the you look at uh, Notebook Leaflets, Volume 1. I'll try to find it for you. 1NL 99.4. See what the Lord says. How can we claim that we have Christ in our midst when actually the corresponding works shows that we are not with Christ? Le Notebook Leaflets, Volume 1, page 99, paragraph 4. Those who claim to believe the truth do not possess that power that God will bestow upon them if they really believed and were striving for conformity to his image. The church is in the Laodicean state. The presence of God is not in her midst. If Christ were formed within the hope of glory, conformity to his image will be seen, and the church trials which separate the members from Christ will disappear. Why are we having so many wrangles in our churches? Why are we having people fighting over this and this? Because Christ is not formed within the hope of glory. We have not formed his image. The trials that separate members from members. And what is the solution of this, uh, this crisis that we are having? Is Christ to be formed within the hope of glory. And when we die to self, when we do the medical mission We see it will be in us. In fact, this work of the medical missionary, why is it important? Why is this work more important? Ministry of Healing, page 186, paragraph 2. Why is the work of medical missionary so important in such a times as this? Maybe you may say, why is he talking about medical missionary work? Why is he linking it as the third angel's message and a standing true to God during investigative judgment? Look at what he say, she says in Ministry of Healing, 186, paragraph 2. This arrangement did not, however, only do away with poverty. It was not God's purpose that poverty should wholly cease. It is one of his means for the development of character. The poor, he says, shall never cease out of the land. Therefore I command thee, saying, Thou shalt open thine hand wide unto thy brother, to thy poor and to thy needy in thy land. Deuteronomy 15, 11. So it is a means of developing character. Can you imagine it's a means of slaying self in us? It is a means of us standing investigative justice. How is the character completion attained? How is character completion attained? Christ object lesson page 384 paragraph 2. How is this attained? Love is the basis of godliness. Whatever the profession, no man has pure love to God unless he has unselfish love for his brother. But we can never come into possession of this spirit by trying to love others. Trying just to love others will not bring us into possession of the spirit of Christ. 
it will not bring us into agape love. What will bring us into agape love? What is needed is the love of Christ in our heart, in the heart. When self is merged in Christ, love springs forth spontaneously. The completeness of Christian character is attained when the impulse to help and bless others springs constantly from within, when the sunshine of heaven fills the heart and is revealed in the countenance. This is the completeness of Christian character, the medical missionary work. The work, the most important work, the work of helping and blessing others rather than uh, uh, thinking about self, looking to self and uh, thinking your life more important than other people's life. I'm talking about number eight, the important thing. This is the series, the latter end. We will have to move out of this Laodicean condition and slay self. And how can we do this? It is to carry forward the medical mission work, the work of Isaiah chapter 58. Brothers and sisters, we are being called into a higher calling, the very work that Christ did. Can you hear the Lord speaking to you as he's speaking to me? The work of the people of God is to enlighten the world in accordance with the directions given in the 58th chapter of Isaiah. Here is presented the plan of work which is to be carried on in every place where the truth takes hold of minds and hearts. In connection with the proclamation of the message is to be done the work of relieving families who are in distress. Those who take their position on the Lord's side are to see in Seventh-day Adventist a warm-hearted, self-denying, self-sacrificing people who cheerfully and gladly minister to the need. I want to ask you one question. And you will answer me. Or you will answer yourself. Because you can't answer me. I'm on the other side of the world. You are on the other side of the world. Why? How are... Uh, the salvation how does a catholic church an anglican church maintain a congregation how do they even get converts these people do not do evangelistic campaigns as we do them seventh day adventists but their humanitarian work makes people unto them make people makes their congregation and we have never got this secret we have for years been seated and wondering how is the Catholic Church prospering? How is the Anglican Church? How is the salvation prospering? It is there for us preaching with their needs, then bidding them follow me. The same method that Christ used is the same method that these churches who do not hold their evangelistic campaigns do. I, I want to tell you, at, and I'll not hide because this, I have been in church for a time and I have experienced this, being an official in the church and then being an unmember and being a member, all those things. This is a church we started, and I'm not ashamed to say this. We started a church in uh, Butere. I'll not hide you this because I, I want it to be clear and if you want facts, you can get them from the conference church or whichever church that you can get it from. We started a church in Butere, a Sabbath school. Went ministering to the people, did evangelistic campaign. I was part of the even people who distributed the material for such a campaign. Got 30 converts and baptized them. Brothers and sisters, as I sit here and present this, I'm not a happy man. Within a year, not even a year elapsed, the church, the Sabbath school was closed with all the 30 converts gone back to their churches. Why? Did we not supply the leaflets that had truth? Did we not reach at these people with the truth from the Bible? Did they backslide because they didn't have truth? No way. In fact, one man who went back to his church when the elders visited him and asked him, why have you gone back? And he gave a reason. I don't have food to eat. I don't have a clothing. He was a lame person, a young boy of 20 years plus. 
I don't have food. I don't have clothing. But who are visiting me to give clothes and food? It is the same church that I came from. It is the one. It is demonstrating what is Christianity. But what are you demonstrating? Within one year, we had lost 30 converts that were baptized and took fundamental took oaths on the baptismal vows. Why? We can profess as long as we can about Seventh Day Adventism, but if we are not Seventh Day Adventist by works that makes a Seventh Day Adventist, you will continue to do those meetings and even uh, spend millions and billions of money to do these evangelistic campaigns. But at the end of the day, they'll enter in one door and go into the another door. Why? They come in, and what do they hear? It is so sad. They come in, they have heard the message. These people are jobless and they do not have anything. And yet, one time, the pastor comes and stands on the pulpit and says that your tithe can't add up for this to continue being a Sabbath school or church. It will be closed up. And so what is that nonsense? You are telling our people who are jobless, people who have nothing, that the church will be closed and they are converts? What kind of things do pastors of the Seventh-day Adventists actually do? Brothers and sisters, I am filled with indignation. This is not the way the gospel should be going forward. You cannot reach a goal of a certain type, so your church will be closed, your Sabbath school will be closed. And you are talking that in front of a convert who doesn't have food, who doesn't have clothes, and he is lame and you expect him to continue being a Seventh-day Adventist. The Lord says that they are better outside there than they are in. You make them twice the sons of Belial than what they was. They go outside there thinking that what only the church cares is about the tithe and the salary of the pastors. What about the common person who is coming to the church? Anyway, let us move on. The most important thing. Let me not be distracted. Matthew, volume 1, page 224, to say. I'm looking at the most important thing. The series is the latter rain series. We are told, but the work of providing for all the depraved, all the drunkards, and all the prostitutes has not and never will be given by the Lord to the Seventh Day Adventist. So how do we keep the balance of everything? How do we keep the balance? If this is not the work, medical missionary is to be a sign of our atonement with Jesus, the evidence of his messianship. Luke chapter 4 verse 18. The spirit of God is upon me. He has anointed me. will reason chapter 4 verse Let us look once again in the Bible, the book of Luke, chapter 4, verses 18. It says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and covering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And so, when the anointing of the Lord is upon us, we will do the works of Christ, because he says that the works that I do, those who believe in me, will do greater works than this. And so, the work of the medical mission work, which is the most important work, will show people that uh, Seventh-day Adventists have the sign of with Jesus. They will show the evidence of messianship, the prerequisite for the latter rain, the glory of the Lord in the loud cry. And this is what the Laudations don't have. This is the the missing link in the whole thing of the third angel's message. Yes, we have the truth. What is the third angel's message? We have the truth. What is the seal of God? We have the truth. What is the mark of the beast? We have the truth about all these reforms. 
but where are the signs that accompany this truth that we have? The missing link is Christ working in us to slay selfishness so that we may come to a place that we understand what it means to be a real Seventh day Adventist. Seventh day Adventists manage the work. Correspond to what is doing in the most holy place. We need the latter end, then we need to wake up. Volume 75. The time is so short, and there is a great work to be done. If you feel no interest in the work that is going forward, if you will not encourage medical missionary work in the churches, it will be done without your consent, for it is the work of God, and it must be done. Because the church now sees no necessity of doing this work, God is going to start a religious system called the Medical Missionary Movement. Medical Missionary Team. In transit or anything else, not in and being at their in winning souls to Christ. And a call will be made, and a call is being made right now. And they will go forward with the of the Lord and be able to accomplish the work. The work that only Christ can make it to be completed. Christ is waiting with longing desire for the manifestation of himself in his church. When the character of Christ shall be perfectly reproduced in his people, then he will come to claim them as his own. The completeness of Christian character is attained with the impulse to help and bless others when the impulse to help and bless others springs constantly from within. Is this how you feel? Is it just desires that you have? Or is it something that you should be practicing? Why will many of us be lost actually? Why will many of us be lost? We are told paragraph it is not something that is to be joked around look at what we are told I just desires the only thing that you have as a Christian as a seventh day admin no savers Christian but desires only cannot take you anyway look steps to Christ for seven two Desires for goodness and holiness as, are as right as far as they go. But if you stop here, they will avail nothing. Many will be lost while hoping and desiring to be Christians. They do not come to the point of yielding the will to God. They do not now choose to be Christian. They do not choose to manifest the most important thing, the works of the Day of Atonement. And why is this becoming so hard? Saves to Christ, 43, paragraph 3. Warfare against the greatest battle that of self and all requires us, but the soul must submit to God before it can be renewed in holiness. This surrender, not of only our hearts, but also our possession, is what Christ is waiting to be demonstrated in our lives. When we reach at a point like the days of apostles where everything now belongs to everyone and i'm not talking about capitalism no that's not what i'm talking about the distribution of wealth to others no that is not my point i'm talking about when christians reach to a point they are dead to self both in heart and in possession you look at uh, how the early rain was able to fall in the book of Acts chapter 1 and chapter 2. I'll just read a portion of it. The book of Acts chapter 2 and I'm looking at uh, verses uh, 42 
247. I'll blow it on the screen now. That is um, Acts 42. You will go and verify if these things be so. I don't want you just to listen and say amen. I want you to think what you are hearing. I want you to, uh, uh, these things to stick in your brain. Take the notes, go through them, ascertain that what you are hearing is truth. Be vigilant in everything that you hear. On the day of Pentecost, and I, I presented uh, in, uh, if you want to learn more about what happened in the day of Pentecost, uh, I did a presentation number six day of Pentecost. I was getting some of them. The number six in the series later in as in the day of Pentecost. Go to my page. Be able to go through it and see. So what made them have the early rain? Acts chapter two, verses forty two to forty seven. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came on every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together, and had all things common, and sold their possessions and goods, and parted them to all men as every man had need. They did the medical missionary work, and they continued daily with one accord in the temple, and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart praising God and having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Now you tell me if this is what we are doing as Laudations, as a church, as a people, as individuals. And it seems like this Christianity is now narrowing down. Bible Commentary, Volume 4, 1151. Bible Commentary, Volume 4. It is pages, is page 1151. It says, As Christians, we are to have righteousness that shall be developed and seen. A righteousness then the character when he was. The confession of religion will never bring men and women to truth, but a demonstration of that truth. Those who wait for bridegroom's coming are to say to the people, Behold, you are God. The last, the last, the world of his character. God are to manifest his glory. In their own life and character, they are to reveal what the grace of God has done to them. Shall we continue with the condition now? Unless we are preparing to fall during investigative judgment. The apostolic times were at times experience in this on a more life with greater power than that which attended in the day of Pentecost. The Lord needs primitive goldness in us. How can this be accomplished? What was the secret of the apostolic power that we should partake? Reading on, nothing will help us more at this stage of our work than to understand and fulfill the mission of this medical mission for the earth. It will help us more than the sacred is the perfect response with the life work of the great missionary. The object of our mission is the same as the object of Christ's mission. Why did God send his son to the fallen world? To make known and demonstrate to 
God's love for them. That word. But to them. And so our work has been largely in making known, but not demonstration. The apostolic power was hidden. Nothing will help brothers and sisters. Nothing a demonstration of this work. The object of our mission is the same as the object of Christ's mission. God's purpose in committing to men and women the mission that he committed to Christ is to disentangle his whole work and give them a work that did. Medical ministry. In no way could the Lord be better glorified and the truth more highly honored than for unbelievers to see that the truth has wrought a great and good work in the lives of vicious and penurious men. If it could be seen that the church had an character to change them from close, selfish, overreaching, money-living men to men who love to do good, who seek opportunities to use their means to bless those who need to be blessed, who visit the widow and find affliction, and who are supported from to be an religion. Sisters, I have to read this quote one again. If you did not hear me well, now hear it. In no way could the Lord be better glorified and the truth more highly honored than believers see that Christ wrote a great and on the lives of naturally vicious and nurious men. Our hearts are naturally covetous and penurious. Love of money and love for keeping for sale. If it could be seen that the faith of an influence their characters, change them from overreaching, money loving men to men who love to do good, who seek opportunities to use their means to bless those who need to be blessed who visit the widow and fatherless in their affliction, and who keep them separated from the world, it will be and that religion genuine. What does the world see currently in the people professing Seventh-day Adventism and genuine religion? Do you think with such a view from the wilding of us, we can be able to have a telling influence on them? No way. It could never happen. Not in such a world that we are living in. It's decision time. And I'd like to put something on the screen too. I want to put something on the screen as uh, we look at the few last points. Something. How is this? How is even this possible in this world? Maybe. We should read again. The people of the book, when I joined this, this is what it was. When I say, page, page, paragraph one. SM page uh, 122 paragraph 1. The old standard, uh, standard bearers knew what it was to wrestle with God in prayer and to enjoy the outpouring of His Spirit. But these are passing off from the stage of action and who are coming up to fill their places. How is it with the rising generation? 
Are they converted to God? Are they awake to the work that is going on in the heavenly sanctuary and the work they have to do? Or are we waiting for some compelling power to come upon the church before we shall arouse? Maybe some people are saying, Oh, hold on. When the latter rain comes, you shall see the church rise and do what it's supposed to do. No, you are self-deceived. Are we hoping to see the whole church even revive? That time will never come. Are we waiting for a compelling power to come upon us before we act? That day will never come. When it comes, when you see the latter rain falling and the work going on and you are not participating in it, you know that you will never participate in it. I'm not lying. the thing. Know that you have passed over. You have to for your position. I have a few slides to read and then we end this. The most important thing. There is a work to be done by our churches that few have any idea of. Which work is this? I was unhungered, Christ says, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. Naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. This is Matthew chapter 25 speaking about the wise virgins. The foolish virgins will never do this. They will remain in laudition condition, waiting upon compelling power. Behold, the bridegroom cometh, and then they arouse and take their lamps to go and fill them with the oil. The sellers, when they come in back, the door is closed. I was in prison and you came unto me. There is a work as yet untouched that must be done. The mission of Christ was to heal the sick, encourage the hopeless, bind up the brokenhearted. This work of restoration is to be carried on among the needy, suffering ones of humanity. There is a work to be done by our churches that few have any idea of. Are you among those who don't have an idea of what We need to be around. We need to go on our knees more than we have ever been. There is a work as yet untouched that must be done. God does not only it's not only for your benevolence. You are grand. God's afflicted one. Some are sick and hope has departed bring back the sunlight to them there are souls who have lost their courage speak to them pray for them there are those who need the bread of life read to them from the word of god there is no no man pray to jesus all your work will be present to make impressions upon hearts this is the kind of medical mission or work to be done. Bring the sunshine of the sun of righteousness into the room of the sick and suffering. Teach the inmates of the poor. Even in cooking, you a simple prepared for a people is a balm to them. This is the kind of medical mission or work to be done. And this will be a sign that we have received atonement. This is the sign that uh, Christ is indwelling in us. This will be a sign to the world not just having a actually in their lives they have Christ. And so it is simple. The last slides. Read Isaiah 58, you who claim to be the children of light. Especially do you read it again and again, who have felt so reluctant to inconvenience the who and houses are too poor to make a home for the house. Read you who see orphans and widows oppressed by the iron hand of poverty and bowed down by hard-hearted worldlings. Read it. Are you afraid that an influence will be introduced into your family that will cost you more? Yes. 
blessing may come and realize you every day. But if otherwise, if extra labor is called for, you can draw upon one who has promised. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thine health break forth speedily. The reason God's people are not more and I have is because are narrowed up with selfishness. The prophet is addressing Sabbath keepers, not sinners, not unbelievers, but those who make great pretensions to godliness. It is not you are meeting the concepts. If the new is the right, the right thing and at the right time, it is to be less self-caring and more benevolent. Our souls must expand. Then God will make them like a watered garden whose waters fail not. In two of the it is all right thing. Volume, page twenty-four. This evening, wherever you are, if it is morning, it's night, or whichever time it is. I want to pray that you will be part of the three angels going in the four corners of the world. In which way? In carrying forth the work of Isaiah chapter 58, the most important thing, the medical missionary work. A demonstration that we have received atonement and you have been anointed as Christ was anointed. I don't know. Let me read. Closing. Maybe it is in Acts chapter 10. I don't know. The book of Acts. I'll try to look for it. The book of Acts. It should be in chapter 10. Verses 38. Let us read this in closing. Sweet that God tell you what you are supposed to do so that you may participate in the most important thing during this time of the day of atonement and during this time when the Lord is to shower his latter rain upon his people. The book of Acts chapter 10 verse 38. Our closing verse. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went, doing, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. Medical missionary work. May the good Lord anoint us with his Holy Spirit. May he renew our strength in him. And may he not just endow us with the fruit of the Spirit, but even the gift of the Spirit, so that uh, we may be able to accomplish the most important things that we have to do at such a time as this. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you. For no one will be lost who have heeded unto your voice. The things that we have neglected to do, Lord, you are a God of second chances. More than twice you speak to men, and you are not interested in the death of a sin, rather that they should turn their ways and do the right thing. Now the power is to come from you, the anointing is come from you, the way you anointed Christ and he went about doing good. Through thy son anoint us that we may have the same power and we shall worship you and glorify your name in christ jesus name we ask of these things amen god bless you